Hey, hey happy campers. campers. We are back from seven long days at sea. I love the Caribbean. <laughs> <laughs> We're still on cruise time, okay? Yeah, I still feel, and I can't even say this. I, t- I called my parents last night. They were like, how was the cruise? I was like, it's amazing. I'm exhausted. They were like, shut up right now. Don't you ever bitch about being exhausted from a cruise. But between me and you campers, I am, I'm still I'm still catching up. Yeah, it's it's a lot to do a lot of nothing. A lot, yeah. But you know what, though? If, if you watched us online, we didn't stop posting. We didn't stop performing. We didn't even stop drinking for y'all. Okay, the antics were on high alert. And welcome <laughs> to the cruise episode. Ooh. So yeah, we were on the Royal Caribbean Wonder of the Seas cruise to what, the perfect day at Coco K. At Coco K. It was so much fun. <laughs> can I make a joke? At Coco K, you, you can, can have it your way. At Coco K, your way. That's the BK joke. I don't know if you've seen that. Me and Jonathan, that that should have been a song of the week. Oh, it's we not. But <laughs> No, so we got to do the seven-day Royal Caribbean cruise. Uh, and Jonathan, explain to the campers why we did the cruise. So full transparency, a couple months ago, I did an ad for Royal Caribbean for their cruise ship that's coming out next year, the Icon of the Seas. Mm-hmm. And uh, <clears throat> Oh, excuse me, sorry. And as part of the payment, they were like, hey, we'll send you on a cruise. I was like, say no more. Let me just buck it. Yeah, so we got to do this cruise pretty much. Did for... I just say buck it? Yeah, I don't know. Book what... it. Okay, well, I just was going to keep going with sorry. it. Sorry. <laughs> well, we got to do this cruise pretty much for free. Thank God it was so I just want you guys to know this isn't an ad, but a lot of the stuff we got to do was comp for the most part. We had a great room. It was like a balcony. We paid for a couple things, but we'll get into the nitty gritty. But we just want to be fully transparent here that the reason why we did this cruise was because Jonathan did a glorious ad for Royal Caribbean. So thank you, Royal Caribbean. Yes, thank you, Royal Caribbean. A fun week. But hey, this is not sponsored. And we're going to give you the tea. We're going to tell you what was great, what was bad. But for the most part, y'all know it was fun. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're going to do like, we're coming out with like a, a little scorecard, uh, a Camp Counselor's Caribbean Cruise scorecard. Yeah, so this entire episode, you guys, we're going to be talking about our cruise adventure, some great cruise stories that we got, but the entire episode is cruise theme. So our intro this week is going to be a little bit longer because we're going to break down in categories what we like. You know, if you've seen Instant Hotel... Mm. We're kind of vibing with that. But if you haven't seen that, I'm sure you've seen Four Weddings on TLC, another favorite of mine. So we're going to break it down in a couple categories. Jonathan, what are the categories we will be featuring for Royal Caribbean Wonder of the Seas? So we will be ranking the ship layout, excursions and islands we visited, the shows on board, and food and beverages. Yeah, I think that's perfect. Yeah, so those four, the quadruple. The quad. I don't know. These words that are coming out of your mouth are just so exciting today. I'm on ship time, babe. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what to tell you. Okay, let's start with... With the ship features. So if you've never been on a cruise, they have like the promenade, Mm -hmm. which for us, I think was on the fifth floor. It's where we walked in when we first arrived to the cruise. It's like the downtown. It looks like a little outside area. If there was a mayor of the cruise, he would probably be living there. Um, What else did they have? They had weird shops that for some reason we waited outside of like it was Black Friday. There was a little crowd and all we wanted we're landing. Well, let me explain this to you, okay? We were on the cruise for about two hours, and I and you get these little cards, and basically the card is where everything works. So you can charge things back to your room. It has your drink package on there. It has everything. So I'm looking around at these girls and guys, and I'm like, I want a lanyard. I want it on a necklace. It just seems so hands-free, and I think it was like the best I, it was. It seemed like a very. I wouldn't lose it. Is yeah. what I'm trying to say right. here. So the cruise gift shop opened at 6:30. We got on the boat around two, and I'm looking at everybody. So I'm like, oh my god, we have to go to the gift shop. It's not opening till 6:30. So we waited outside of this cruise gift shop, and it was like 6:25, and there was already like five couples there. 6:30 hits. There's 10 couples there. The doors are not open. They're late to opening this cruise gift shop. It's 640. It's a mob at this point. And I'm like, oh my God, this guy have the best stuff in here. Why is everybody waiting outside? Well, I see the lanyards at the window. I'm like, oh, we're going to rip for the lanyards. We get inside at like 645, 15 minutes late. They were, hey, they were on cruise time. They were on cruise time. We they were gone to get those lanyards. And they were fine. They were pretty average. And the gift shop as a whole, I'm not, I was, hey, I was not gagged. I was not gagged either, but we definitely were wiped up. In the hype. Oh, we were. But I also feel like what I love about like Disney, I'll just take it to a different vacation here. Disney merch really like they have a great design team. It gets like there's the kind of the corny like 50th annual whatever castle merch. But there's always some like kind of clever cool merch. Royal Caribbean, I need someone to get on that design team and make some better merch. I feel like it was very like 
plain Jane, yeah. expensive, not not really giving. Yeah. But we got our lanyards and they were pretty plain. And they we were, did wait outside like we were waiting for a meet and greet. The lanyards were nice though. And, and continuing on with the promenade, to me it kind of gives, if you've ever been to a casino and you kind of are in that lobby area, a lot of like shiny platinum railings, all tile, big up lightings, live music kind of coming from every direction. They had a big steel giant cowboy hat. Um, a lot of hullabaloo and a lot of chaos. Did we ever get to the bottom of the the cowboy hat? No, I, I think didn't it was. It. I think it was just for goops and gags for photo opportunities. We didn't take a picture by it. We did not. I might have it in a video. I think we have it on a video on another feature we'll mention later. Uh-huh. It's definitely in that video. Um, but yeah, so the, oh, starting off in the cruise, you have the promenade, a long hallway of stores, little shops, and little restaurants. Moving on, we have Central Park. <gasps> Central Park, y'all. It's a neighborhood. This was outside on the floor right above and it was like it was like futuristically simulated if the world ended and you had to keep your sanity somehow this would be the simulated park it would be in they played bird noises they i was did. like we were in the middle of the ocean i was like are there birds on this boat and you're like absolutely not i was like oh my, they're playing it through the speaker so it's built in the center of the ship and it's like there's like there's like rooms all on the sides of it and they have over a thousand live plants in there and it kind of wraps around there's some more restaurants there that's where the fancy jewelry store is they call it central park however I've been to Central Park, as some of you may know. This was not a realistic Central Park. Where were the pigeons? Where were the people setting up marijuana selling tables on pop-up poker tables, okay? Where was the couples fighting? I didn't see any of that. This was like a, a very idealistic version of Central Park. But if you've never been and that's your only reference, I am going to tell you, you are going to be a little disappointed when you go to the real one. Actually, that's not true. Real New York City Central Park is so gorgeous and beautiful. But um, this one was like um, a, a model version of what the cruise thinks it would be. It was nice, but it was spooky a little. It gave me the creeps at some point. It was beautiful, gorgeous. but yeah. it, something was a little off. I think it was the robot. It was small. Moving forward, the, the robot birds, the boardwalk, the boardwalk, another outside excursion, a simulated boardwalk. What did they? They had a carousel. They had a damn carousel. They had a little mini arcade, which you were shooting hoops, babe. I was like, wow, sign me up for wags. I'm My sorry. man's a baller. I did seventh grade basketball. I'm not ashamed. I was mostly a bench warmer. But I did get to do some layups during practice, so I know my way around a metal hoop. You do, and you sure warmed my bench later. They also had that Zoltar guy, the robot guy who gives the, uh, he's like a fortune teller if you've ever seen the Tom Hanks movie Big. He was shady. I paid $3, charged it to my room. They make that way too easy. But I charged it to the room, and he basically was like, hey, you're just, you're not doing enough. You need to do more. Your life's not going to go anywhere. And I was like, that was it. That was what I paid for. And then you did the same thing and he told you something else shady. And he's like, if you give me three more bucks, I'll tell you more. Yeah, he was dragging us, wasn't he? He was. I was like, somebody programmed that too. But anyway, what else was that? Oh, the Johnny Rockets. Um, Ooh. Are, I don't think I've ever seen a Johnny Rockets. Uh, no, that's not true. I saw one in Philly, but the only Johnny Rockets I've really been to have been on cruise ships. I've been on Johnny Rockets. There's one in Providence Place Mall, so I've definitely been on Johnny Rockets before. It was okay. It was very expensive, and that one was the, that wasn't included in our package, so we did have to pay for that. It was thirty dollars a person. Was it thirty? I think it was twenty. Yeah, it was thirty. And they give you an appetizer. You get an entree. You get a free drink. You get a dessert. Whatever. It was overpriced. We had a grilled cheese. Um, I just love a grilled cheese, but. Not for $30. No, we really got scammed on that one. And it was okay. And like the onion rings were bottomless. But when you give me six and I ask for a second portion, I don't feel comfortable asking for a third. I feel like a glutton, even though I could have had four portions of the onion rings. Um, The boardwalk was okay. It was fun. We didn't really spend much time there. No. It was great for kids. No, because they had the, the the big aqua theater, which is like one of their big selling points for the ship was like under it. Yeah. Which we did see a show there. We'll get to that later. But um, but yeah, that was the boardwalk, which I thought it was fine. It was Lots fun. of kids. Yeah. Um, but Johnny Rocket, I don't think I've left a Johnny Rocket satisfied in my life. So it wasn't just the cruise ship. It's just Johnny Rockets all around. You need to get it together, JR. Thank you. What was next? Oh, the pool deck. So we're going to talk about the pool deck. So on deck 15 and 16 is kind of the combination pool decks. There's four pools on deck 15. They have a little kid zone area. They have um, hot tubs everywhere. And then deck 16 is kind of just all more seating above. Plenty of seating for the girlies. But I will say, if you want a good seat, 
you better get out there early because people are gunning for those seats, okay? It's 6 a.m. People are already dropping their bags off on the seats and then going to get breakfast. I think that's shady. I don't think that's fair. But hey, it's a lawless land on the cruise, on the seven seas. It's true. I hate when other people do it, but it's okay when I do it. Um, What else was up there? Oh, zip lining. They had zip lining on this one where you could zip, zap, zap, like all the way across the little thing. We didn't do it. You tried. I tried to do it and they saw that I had a drink in my hand and they were like, if you've been drinking, you can't do it. And I was like, what if I can't him the drink? And they're like, no, we already saw you holding the drink. And I thought to myself, I already said this on my Instagram story. If I've been drinking, okay, what does it matter if I'm on a zip line? Because I should be securely strapped in whether I have been drunk or have been sober either way. I guess they're afraid of people vomiting over Central Park. True. Or was it Central Park or was it over? No, it was over the boardwalk. It was over the boardwalk. Yeah, they probably don't want people like hurling up a whirlwind, but I'm a professional, okay? I don't hurl, I twirl, baby, okay? Well, we did almost hurl a couple of times, but that was from... From the ship. Yeah, that's a different story. <laughs> um, What else did they have? They oh, had the surfing excursion. They had the surf... What was that called? I call it the surf extreme section. Okay, Johnny Tsunami. Jo yeah, we're calling it... They were calling it that Johnny Tsunami zone. Um, We didn't spend a lot of time there. I thought I would spend more time there, but there was like limited seating. And every time we went by, people were killing it. I was like, boring. I want to see people wiping out, breaking limbs, smashing their face against that water jet. But meanwhile, there's an 80-year-old man out there and he was slaying it. I was like, fall over, grandpa. I'm bored. You literally were like, take a picture of me, but take it as he falls. And I'm standing there for like a full 60 seconds. You're like, are you... Did you go? I was like, this man is good. Like, he, he is not... Not fallen and he was old he was old but he killed it and hey congrats to that grandpa we love you so much but i wish you would have broken a spleen mahalo Mah <laughs> you know what else they had so right next to that was it was called the abyss oh. and it was like a, a little racing slide that went down from the 16th floor to the sixth, sixth floor. floor 10 floors that went down it wasn't a water slide it was like you get on you get in your little knapsack which was a lot heavier than i thought it would be it think was, about a designer potato sack yeah it, precisely that so you and i I got down it and he was yelling at me because I had my phone out. He was like, put your phone in your pocket. I was like, don't tell me what to do. But I did because I am scared of authority oftentimes. Um, but it was so cool. They, it was really dark. And then all of a sudden they have like lights going on in there and they're like bumping music from outside. I felt like Rihanna's unborn child during her Super Bowl performance <laughs> in there. <laughs> That's what it felt like to me. And then you get birthed at the end. And I was like, whoa. Wait, that was really funny. I didn't know you were going to slide that joke in there. That's what it felt like. That, did you just come up with that on the spot? I did. And you're clever. That's, that's what it felt like. It was a fun slide. You Okay, but you're really, you're denying, you're denying the campers the truth of the story. What? That you weren't going to do the slide. The dry slide? You weren't going to do it. I wasn't going to do it. I don't love enclosed slides. Yeah, you, he has, okay, wait, you need to give them a little more context here. You well, have a fear. So there were big water slides was more of my fear. Okay. And I don't love water slides. I had this nightmare one time that um, there was like a screw that was loose. And when I went down it, the screw cut open my back and it ripped out my my umbilical cord from my back, my spleen. What is it? My Your liver. umbilical cord was more funnier. Something that's inside <laughs> of me. And I got to the bottom and it was closed and it filled up with water and it was like slingshotting me back. All this to say, I don't love water slides. I don't like the idea of them. Um, we did a really scary graphic final destination fear that is not going to happen. And I'm glad you, but, but now let's, there's some light at the end of the tunnel. <laughs> some light at the end of the, the tunnel. At the end of the slide. <laughs> at the end of the slide. Because the water slide we didn't end up doing after a day of drinking, it was freezing cold. I got chlorine and other chemicals probably piss up my nose and I didn't like it. I'm proud of you though. You didn't want to do it the entire trip and I wasn't going to push it and you knew that I really wanted to do it and you had some drinks in you and we did we did a zip line excursion that we'll talk about later and I was like babe if you can zip line you can do this water slide and you said you know what I can and you did it. The water slide was scarier than the zip line. And that's not okay. But anyway the abyss which was the dry slide the potato sack that was so fun. I loved that. That was really fun. The water slides were fun too. The pool decks were great. They had a lot of great seating and the vibes were high. I will say I am jealous of Carnival moving forward because I'm, I'm going to be honest here with my, my, my like description of the ship carnival i've heard has a lot more of a party scene royal caribbean is really great for all ages right you have someone for something for everybody there a lot of the crew a lot of the people on the board were a lot older but that's just kind of a cruise demographic anyways carnival i've heard there's a lot more like partying out on the pool decks this was nicer because you could kind of like get a little bit further away and read if you wanted to but the which pool we decks, did which we did the pool decks were really nice and we love them um do you want to move to the next section 
I think. Oh wait, no, the solarium. That's the next section. <clears throat> oh yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, the solarium was. <laughs> I was giving a presentation working for Royal Caribbean. <laughs> The solarium was probably my favorite section of the cruise. So it's an adult only area. I think you have to be 16 plus, right? I think so. And it's like the front of the very, the front of the ship. And it's this entire like glass dome, which is what a solarium actually is. And they had like three hot tubs in there, lots of long chairs. They had a bar. The vibes were very like green and lush in there. And it was just like really pretty. And there was like light music playing. It was really great to like relax and like read a book, but you were also getting direct sun because it was glass. It was warm in there. It was really nice. It was beautiful. It was a little hot because it was definitely giving, um, uh, greenhouse vibes. Greenhouse. It's a greenhouse. I, I almost said treehouse vibes. That too. Um, but we did meet two of our favorite people there, which again, hey, that's going to come a little bit later. We got some stories to tell I about I think them. you might know if you've been following us on social media mm -hmm. who we met in the solarium. But we'll get back to them. So, okay. So that closes out our first little ship layout. What would you rate it? Give us with the scorecard. What are we giving it? Honestly, I'm giving it a 10 out of 10. 10 I had 10 so 10. much fun. What are you giving it? I'm giving it a 10 out of 10. It was great. We, there was always somewhere to go, something to explore, something new, something fresh, something fun. Yeah. All right. So let's move on to our excursions and islands. So for the cruise that we did, there were three stops that we made. So our first was at St. Kitts. Couldn't point it out on a map. So we get there. Uh, I don't know what time we ended up getting off the boat, but the excursion that we had was... Zip lining. Zip God. lining in St. Kitts, y'all. So it started off really scary because they make you weigh yourself in front of everyone. First of all, yeah, we're in the middle of the St. Kitts promenade, like their downtown area, and we're like all meeting our excursion people. And for zip lining, yeah, like I'm sure you should have to weigh people, okay? Like right. it's a safety concern. But the fact that they put a scale in the middle of the town center and make you line up one by one and then like write down your number. I was triggered, yet I was brave, and I didn't... And this is something you can't fudge. You can't lie about your number because you want to make sure that, like... <laughs> that, but also, you couldn't if you tried because everybody's huddled around like a damn football huddle. Yeah, and then when you get on the, off the scale, they go, ooh. Yeah, everyone's like, oh, And that girl's like, it's at 140 for me. It, it, it's wrong. There's absolutely no way. I was like, yeah, it was, I think it's mine was off for sure. I yeah. think all of it was off, but that's <laughs> neither here nor there. Well, what happened when we were getting in line? Tell them what happened. So we're waiting in line, and... The woman who was checking us in comes up to us and is like, can you guys, how did it, what, how did she I need a favor. It? I need a favor. Can you be, can you sign off on this underaged zipliner? Her mom can't go and we need you to sign her off as her guardian. And she's asking me. And at this point, I think she's going to be riding attached to me. Yeah. And I said, I said, I literally, I feel bad. I volunteered you to do it because I'm such a sweaty person. I can't have somebody on my back. I just can't. Like, tandem to me. I'm already sweating enough. And I sweat that entire excursion. I get it. So Tell I, them what you did. I look at you and I say, Jonathan will do it. So I legally, in a legal <laughs> binding contract, <laughs> sign off on taking temporary guardianship over this minor. She's 15 years old. For her protection, we're going to call her Lily. She was from Argentina. And she was nice. First of all, she had a back tattoo. Yeah. We saw her beforehand. And I was like, how old was this girl? She got a back tattoo. And then we asked her later. She's like 15. They're giving 15 of tattoos in Argentina. She was rebellious. She was nice. But she had she had a little bit Wait, of edge to her. Let's tell them after we talk about the zip line what she was doing. Uh, oh, I will. Oh. I have that already. So now, Lily. now I'm nervous because I'm like, okay, well, zip lining is dangerous. We're in a completely different country. I don't know what I just signed, which honestly was me. And her mom was there and happy to pawn her off on these two random men. Maybe it's because we're not intimidating because we have limp wrists. I don't know. But yeah, we're was, literally shaking. We're like shaking her ass. Has been like, woo, girly, let's go. And yeah, like, and, okay. and the mom's like, they'll take you. <laughs> so she, the mom didn't say a word to us. Just nodded. And, and went on her well, own. There was excursion. a language barrier for her, for sure. She spoke Spanish. So she was probably like, okay, like that woman handled it. You know what I mean? So I asked Lily where her mom's going. She's like, arms crossed. She's like, I don't even know. She's doing some excursion. She told me to meet her on the boat later. I was like, okay, so here we go. So we all pile in. We go, we, uh, we straddle up to do our zip lining. Absolutely the most em second embarrassing thing that I've worn in, in public in a very long time was this, what the harness, it felt like a big diaper because you had to be ready to sit in it. It was full, nearly full frontal. I was out. It was, it was not comfortable. 
But then we got on our little zip lines and the first one was fine because it was a tester. Well, they take you up this like really rickety like truck up to this mountain that you're all kind of like huddled in the back of and it's like pothole city. And you're basically like being like rocked the fuck around before you even get to the top of the mountain. And we get to the very top and that's when the zip line starts. You're going to like go back down, I guess, right? Like they kind of- Yeah, we zip line down. That's (laughs) why. Literally zip line down. But that was fun. You 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 fly right over right over all the the greenery and the shrubbery. I I don't know what's wrong with me because I was excited and I don't love heights necessarily. But I didn't. My adrenaline wasn't going as I thought it would. Like I wasn't nervous or scared at any time. I was having fun. Don't get me wrong. But when you got off, you were like. I couldn't breathe. Shake city. I couldn't breathe. You literally are like suspended over this. Like I, I, I couldn't even tell you. I can't even tell you how far six feet is. It was l- higher than six <laughs> feet though. Probably like, hundreds of feet over this mountain top. Yeah. Ocean on the left. Trees below you that tigers. look like little like. There's no tigers. Panthers. And then when you get to the end of the zip line, you smash against this spring so hard it doesn't hurt, but it's very jarring. It rocks your body back and forth. That when I unclipped, I couldn't even catch my breath. My heart was racing so much. I had fun, but like my body was taking over. It was a really. It was scary. We had never done it before. That's how I felt. In line for the water side. Okay. That I'm, is not, where, I'm holding my comments to myself. That's where here. the adrenaline came in. I'm just, and I I'm, I refuse to be bullied. So anyway, so then I'm talking to this girl who I'm like, okay, she's my temporary daughter. I have to take her under my wing, right? And at one point, I, I forget what I asked her. And she gave me a little bit of attitude. And I was like, first off, I'm the parent here. Like, watch your sass. Second off, I respect the sass. Because if you're out here by yourself, you got to be a little sass. You got to have a little sassafras in your cup, you know? What did she, what did she give you attitude about I asked her if she'd ever done it before, if she'd ever done zip lining before. And she was like, I have, but not this long. This is like four hours. I was like, well, I think it includes like the drive. And she's like, yep, that was only an hour. And crossed her arms and did the head thing. Yeah. And I was like, but guess who was right? She was correct. <laughs> but that was only an hour. Hold the sassafras. Yeah. So after we do the zip lining, we get back and she starts talking to like, a random, fully grown adult man who lived like in St. Kitts, who like lived in the town that we were ziplining in. And I was like, g- girl, like giving numbers. And I was like, first off, he probably doesn't know because I know she's lying about her age. And I was like, this girl's going to get like kidnapped or something. Something's bad is going to happen to her. And legally, if that happens, what happens to me when I go to court? I'm concerned for her safety. And also what happens to me? So this man was, I'm going to be honest with you guys. I could tell he had gray, a gray beard. This man was in his late forties, early fifties, and she's exchanging social media with him. And I'm like, what is Lily doing? But I knew that like, it was going to be fine. Cause there was no way we're going on a cruise ship. Okay. We're fine. Right. But while this is happening, she's like side eyeing me, like seeing that I, cause I moved closer. I'm like Liliana Marie. Get your ass over here. So that was gorgeous St. Kitts. We had a great time. The was great. The next day we went to St. Thomas. <sighs> I love St. Thomas. It is so gorgeous there. Now I know why they call it Tommy Bahama. Is that from St. Thomas? I don't you know. You made that up. Anyways, St. Thomas was a very chill day. We did like an excursion that was a beach tour. So we basically got in a big van. They dropped us off to Megan's Beach. And that was really fun. We met our friends there again that we'll talk about later. So we got to hang out with them all day. And then we took our bus ride up to the mountaintop of St. Kitts. And they have a gift shop up there. And they make these famous banana daiquiris that were crazy 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 i got drunk and this entire time we were riding around in this van with this man named roy and we got on the van they were like we need two more people two more people so we were like we'll go and then we got there they're like okay like one of you has to sit in the back with everybody else on this like open air van and then someone sat up front and i was like i will volunteer to sit up front so me and Roy are kicking up front. He's a very, he's an older gentleman who lives from, he's from St. Thomas. Roy. Roy. And he's just like, he has a mic and he's giving the whole spiel to everybody in the back. And then he put the mic down and he would give me some like side tea. And I was like, I'm loving Roy. We were kicking up front. It was like, we were watching the DVD and you were watching the DVD with commentary. Yes, exactly. So he dropped us off at the beach and we got back on the van. Was it from there? Yes. No, he said, it was, yeah, the, it was at the beach. Yeah, yeah, the beach. So he was like, be back at 1135. We walk up to the van at 1136. The entire van is packed, right? And everybody starts throwing these words at us. Oh, you're late. You're late. We're going to leave without you. You're late. You're 1135. 
And I'm like, ex- and I'm already, I'm already drunk at this point, right? If I had three bloody mirrors at the beach, I'm like, excuse me, who the hell are you people? I'm like, it's 11:36, and Roy looks at me. He's like, they need to chill. It's you're one minute, you're good. We weren't gonna leave without you. And I'm like, exactly. So if Roy's not pissed, then why are you pissed? So then you climb in the front cabin in in first class. So you got. Zach is in a totally different part of this. Like he's like in the car and we're hanging out the back. Zach's kicking up front where he's like, yeah, you're totally fine. People are much later than that. You're fine. I'm in the back doing damage control. Sorry. I'm apologizing. People Sorry. are like, yeah, you guys were like almost late. Like this is our vacation too. Started off as a little joke and then it got a little, I was like, sorry guys. Like, I'm so sorry about that. Sorry guys. And I'm texting you up front and they were like, they saw that I was texting you. They were like, ask Roy about the trees. What's going on with these trees? I was like, okay, anything for you people now. Again, trying to do damage control. And I asked Roy control. about the trees and he was like, I don't know. Like, chill. It was like a normal tree. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, first of all, these people, I am so pissed about this because I'm like, if I'm a, mi- it's our vacation too. Okay. A minute. We're, it wasn't even 10. It wasn't even five. It was 60 seconds and y'all have an attitude and you expect me to sit there and to take it. Ew, with your red sunburnt skin and your ugly hairdos and your shitty clothing. Bitch, get fucked. I'm sorry. That really pissed me off. And Roy had my back. Me and Roy are from were like, they need to chill back there. <laughs> sorry that you had to handle it though. <laughs> Anyways. And same. then we had our bandana doc. Bandana doc. Banana daiquiri. Yeah, and guess what? We had 30 minutes at the banda- banana daiquiri factory over there at the gift shop. Guess who was first back to the van? Me, bitch. You weren't going to catch me twice, okay? And we were like, oh, I'm here. And then this is what happened. <laughs> me when we are kicking up front, talking shit while everybody's getting back on the van. And he's like, where is everybody? And then we go back on the van. Everybody's already sat again, but we didn't realize it because we were hanging out with Roy up front. We were two bandana daiquiris in and didn't realize that everybody could hear us talking shit shit about them yeah and they were right like, behind us they're like we got in the back you didn't see us walk in the back way they walked in the back way and again i had to sit in the back with the people and you got to kick you up front that's fine we get back to the ship what happens oh i remember i lost my phone and i'm panicking i can't find my phone anywhere i'm drunk i'm like oh no but i wasn't upset like i wasn't angry like let's, you weren't no yeah. i wasn't i was very like okay like if it's gone it's gone i i can't do anything about it it's a hundred percent my fault so all record show i was not upset we go down to guest services i talked to amore that wasn't her name <laughs> I don't know why I said that. It was something sweet like that, though, like love. Um, and I was like, ma'am, I lost my phone on my boat excursion. Um, I am so sorry. Please don't yell at me. And she was like, I'm going to hit you. And I said, don't hit me. Don't hit me. You know, and she was like, okay, we'll take out all your information. It's okay. Like, we'll we'll call you. And I'm telling Jonathan, I'm like, it's fine. Like, I lost my phone and I'm going to deal with it. The lady next to her who's working next to her is shaking her head. She's like, if I were you, I'd be panicking. I'd be, I'd be a mess. I don't know how you're not a mess. I'd be panicking. She said that? Yes. I was so I drunk, was like, I don't remember. Yeah, I was like, girl, you are front desk. Like, you're supposed to keep us calm, and we are. And she's like, I'd be freaking out. Calls up the Navy. The Navy shows up. I'm just kidding. They don't. <laughs> the Coast Guard I wasn't shows up. worried because I had Apple Care. okay? I had Apple Care. I'll get it when I get back. I get back to the room. I'm like, let me look at my backpack one more time. It was in the side pouch where I keep my water bottle. I would never put my phone there. But also, I was under the influence of those famous St. Thomas banana daiquiris brought to me by my friend Roy. And I had to call back down and be like, hey, you guys. Hey, please delete that form. And they're like, Amore was like, I don't care. It's okay, I'll delete it. And then they called us back later. They're like, did you find your phone? We can't find it anywhere. And we're so sorry. And I'm like, guys, I called back. I said, I found it. But they were really sweet about it. But I did find my phone. <laughs> it was complete and utter chaos. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. We we found it. We handled it. So then, I think it was two days later, we end up at Coco Cay. Again, couldn't point it out on a map. Well, it's an island owned by Royal Caribbean. It's a very small island. It's not even a real island. They just like purchased it just for cruise ships to go there. And you guys, because it was owned by Royal Caribbean, the our drink packages that we already had worked everywhere. They had free food. It was just like everything delivered. Oh my God, it was... It was literally paradise. It's an extension of the ship. So if you're looking at a Royal Caribbean like trip, I would really recommend going to one that stops at Coco Cay because it's like it's like being on the cruise but just being on an island because you can they have a towel place there that you get your free towels from. Like it's everything is included in your cruise package. The island is broken up into two islands. It's like two parts. It's like called Chill Island and Thrill Island. Thrill Island has about like five six roller like water slides and like a water coaster. It's a hundred dollars extra. We were like, we're not into that. I think it was more than that. It was 118 I looked. 118. 
Um, and you can pay for that extra, but unless you have kids that are like dying to go on water slides, I wouldn't recommend it. I think there's so much fun to be had at the beach bars on Chill Island, mm. the swim up bar on the pool, so fun. Um, the, the the beach itself. And I just thought we had so much fun. We just drank the day away on the yeah. island. I read The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. I was crying, had to excuse myself to the restroom twice. I was like, I did not want to have this luxurious beach day turn into this, but it was it was a good book and I finished it there. So then we finished up our time at chill, our little chill vibe on the island. We hopped in the pool and we, yeah, we just, we partied with a bunch of strangers in a pool of people broth. Yeah, everyone's like, oh, on my Instagram story, people pee in that pool, Zach, people pee in that pool. Guys, I pee in that pool. I don't want anyone to say to me, I don't pee in pools. You're either a liar or you're a psychopath, okay? If I'm mid-partying in a pool, I'm not getting out to go. That's what chlorine is for, okay? I'm an adult and I'm honest with myself. And I can see the judgment coming from you. The, I'm not judging you, but I You've will You've never say, peed in a pool. I have peed in a pool. Well, there it is. I do not. I don't pee in pools anymore. And I know it sounds like I'm like lying, but my body like won't let it happen. Oh. I'll pee in the ocean. I, and I did. In fact, I did. Someone DM me and they were like, grow up. You can't pee in pools anymore. Like, grow up. What would we rate all of our, our excursions and islands? 10 out of 10. I would give them a 10 out of 10 as well. Moving forward, the shows, the entertainment on the cruise ship. So cruises, they come with these like shows that you can do at night and there's a bunch of them. Royal Caribbean had, I think like six shows. We saw about four or five of them. I would say they were hit or miss for me. What do you think? I would agree. I would agree. Um, let's start. There was the good and the bad. Should we start with the good or the bad? Let's start with the good. The good. Intense, the water show. So when Jonathan was talking earlier about the aqua theater, it's at the back of the ship. It's like this giant like stadium outside. And we weren't really sure what it was going to be. And we're sitting in the seats. And we know that there's a diving component. And as soon as the show starts, there's a woman at the top of the, like the, what is that, a line? What is that? Uh, a, a trapeze? Wire? Yeah, she was getting trapeze on the top of the ship. And that show hasn't even started yet. Okay, they're still, we're still just getting sat. And she's on this like high wire, like 10 stories up doing her little high line. And the show starts and it starts to, the message on the screen says, dedicated to daughters. So I'm already crying. I'm mm. sentimental now. And it's a dive show featuring all women. And they do kind of like this like water dancing. The stage kind of moves out, open and close. And when it's open, it's a 30-foot like tank that they can dive into. And they'll seamlessly close it in the middle of the show. And they'll do these water dancing. I posted that on my story as well, if you probably saw that. And it was just, it was breathtaking. I was so in love with that show. Yeah, it was really cool. And a full hour, they were just like doing the absolute most. I absolutely loved it. I was so proud of those girls. I was crying. I was screaming. I was throwing my hands up and down every single minute of the show. It was just so breathtakingly talented. I can't swim, as you guys know. And they were just, they were leaping from the top of the cruise ship into these pools and doing tricks. It was just beautiful. Mm -hmm. Moving forward, there was also an ice skating show. Yes, there was an ice skating rink at the bottom of the ship. And it was a beautiful little tiny stadium in there. It was really cold in there, which I loved. And they had this like, great ice skating show that was set to like the seasons of like, like every month they had like a different, like it was like a song for the month. Is that what it was? Yeah, it was called 365, I think. And it was, it just went through the month. Jonathan was like, you think it's called 365 because you can see it from every angle? And I'm like, Jonathan, it's th that's not 360. It's 365 for the days of the year. <laughs> it's, uh, no. It was really, yeah, it was really beautiful. They had like a snow machine in it. And they had, it was all coordinated to lights. I loved it. But you know what I talk about? I want to bitch a little. Mm. What shows were bad? I'm well, sorry. We had a disagreement on one of them. So why don't you go ahead and, and talk oh, about wait. it? The one we disagree about is called Effectors 2. It's clearly the sequel to another, another story. What is the concept of that? It was a superhero thing. And they were like, it was so good on the last cruise ships that we brought it back. Which makes sense for people who go on cruises often with probably kids. But we didn't see the first show. And they recapped it in these famous like t tweets on the screen and it wasn't making much sense and we I feel like we just like turned on the TV and it was halfway through a movie but I liked the music and I liked the dancing a lot yeah it was okay it was like I don't know how to describe it it was like just a, a very loud brightful um show of superheroes I've never been any superheroes I mean that's why it was like we were watching them film those models just dance for the video game that's oh, what it felt like. Very much just dance the musical. Yeah. I like that. Um, I didn't like the show though. Sorry guys. <laughs> and what I hated the most, which I was so disappointed by because I was so looking forward to it, the comedy club. 
Uh, uh, I've been on another cruise and the comedians were so funny, laugh out loud. And you can only see the comedy show once on a cruise because they do the same show every single week. So they're like, you're not going to see it twice. It was these two guys. The first guy was like, okay. The second guy was just like, not funny. I don't like comedians that just make fun of people as their bit. I'm like, if you don't have any funny stories or you're not funny and you're using people as the, like the punch, it was homophobic. It was trying, it was transphobic. He was making fun of the crew from like different countries. And I was like, it was like low hanging fruit, basic jokes. What was the one that he stole from Reddit? I know a girl whose name is L A hyphen A. How do you think it's pronounced? And everybody's like, I don't know. And he says, Ladasha. He's talking about how crazy kids' names were. And I was like, basic, boring, tomato, tomato, tomato. It was like, if we're not laughing and all you're doing is making fun of people who are working on the cruise line, like these people work their asses off and you're thinking it's funny to like make them the punchline of the joke. First of all, are you working your ass off? This joke sucks. I got to go out there and done 10 times the show that he ever did. I, I hated him. I'm and sorry. I'm I don't, him. I don't need to see a straight white man with a microphone doing the accent of people who are going above and beyond like the first service on the ship he was literally mocking their accents i was like i i understand that when you enter a comedy club and you're entering a comedy space like i'm not trying to be woke but i'm no. like i thought i really thought we moved past it it wasn't funny yeah like if your joke about the lgbtq or whatever community is there's all the letters in it like boring like if you want to drag me drag me like i'm I, I will laugh myself all day but if your main punchline is the alphabet thing it's like we've heard this been done and we've heard it been done a lot better than this I was like, who's paying this, man? And guess what? It wasn't just us. Mm -mm. It was like crickets out there. And I was like, bro, you're getting paid for this. Like, you need to be working a lot harder than everybody else is. You know what I mean? It was bad. It was really bad. Overall, the shows were, I'm going to give the shows a 7.5 out of 10 because half of them I liked, half of them I didn't. The ones that I loved, I was gagged. I was gooped. I was throwing roses. The ones I didn't, I felt like I, I wish I was just at the bar. Yeah, I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. Um, but the one show that I would like to mention that hasn't been mentioned was on Channel 5. It was <laughs> Red Bull TV was Channel 5 and they had the 2015 soapbox derby races if you haven't watched it you should watch it we were addicted it was like the only thing that was on tv and we were like why can't we turn this off i what i wonder if it's on youtube the 2015 london soapbox derby sponsored by red bull guys i don't think we can get into that much further i think you have to look that up if you're ever interested it had nothing to do with the cruise just happened to be on the tv and we loved it so last up for our little booze cruise Kit and caboodle. We've got food and bevies. Yeah, a very important category for anybody on a vacation. Am I drinking well? Am I eating right? No. Both yes and no. <laughs> <laughs> Overall, the food was great. So at a, at a cruise, you have an include dining package, which includes like your buffets, your kind of free options, some of like the, the my time yeah. dining, like the yeah. dancing down. Those were good. Overall, I would say very good. Yeah. The breakfast buffet. Honestly, probably the best one I've ever had in my life. Com. Yeah, that was great. What were some of the free food options on the cruise? If there's a buffet on a cruise, it's going to be called the Windjammer. I'm not sure what a Windjammer is, but there's always going to be one on a cruise. They've also got 24-7. I think it was 24-7. It must have been. Sorrento's. They got pizza coming out the ass constantly. You think it was 24-7, like 4 a.m.? I think Pro so. Probably. 24-hour pizza. I went there around like two ish the one time when we left the the nightclub, which there was a nightclub on the ice skating rink. It's all very. It, it's imagine explaining a cruise ship and your day on a cruise to a pilgrim. Well, we're doing it to the campers. Yeah, but the campers know cruises exist, but a pilgrim's like, oh yeah, what? A My father, a Quaker, <laughs> took months to get from Coco K to here. <laughs> My father. Quaker oatmeal <laughs> took months. Uh, okay, but what else was that? Oh, and then our extracurriculars that we had to pay for was Giovanni's, which is an Italian hooked, which you didn't like, and Wonderland, an Alice in Wonderland themed restaurant that had the craziest food. Yeah, you had a, when you walked in, you had to paint your menu with a. It's it's so hard to explain. I feel like this is just like very difficult to get across. Very cool though. Yeah, it was very cool. Food was great. Alcohol mm -hmm. was even better. We had the drink package. You know, we were drinking all day, every day. What were your top three drinks you were drinking on the cruise? Strawberry daiquiri, Diet Coke and Captain Morgan. And 
What was my last one? Prosecco. Yeah. What about you? I was drinking pina coladas, um, Tito's Mules, and Bloody Marys. Mm. Yep. And we drank them all day, every day. As you saw online, we were consistently lit the entire trip. On the last day of the cruise, we were in bed by 9 p.m. because our body said, stop. Stop it now. I had just downed an espresso martini and we went back to the room and you're like, I don't know if I feel like going out because we were supposed to meet our friends. And I was like, oh, I guess I'll sit down. And then you turned around and I had shoes off, contacts out. I was under the covers. I was ready to go to bed. My body was not allowing me to leave that room. We did our best and we ate and we drank like kings. Overall, what would you rate the food and Bev? Together, I would say 10 out of 10. If I had to separate them, I would say food like eight and a half. And then drinks were 10 out of 10 for sure. I'm going to say 8.5 out of 10. Honestly, I was on a Norwegian cruise and I didn't love the food. Overall, this food was really great. I think if I were to suggest it, be really cautious of what you pick for additional dining. I think the buffets and the the, din- the dining room dinner thing is really comparable to the extra add-ons. We got a lot of those extra add-ons free because of what Jonathan did for work. Had we had not done those for free, I would have been a little bit like, ugh, why do we pay this extra money for it when the buffet is just as good? Because they really be killing it on them buffets, you guys. So if you're looking to do Royal Caribbean, just really research the restaurants and look online what people think because they were okay. Buffets, though, fantastic. I didn't love the hot dogs. I'm sorry. I'm just going to say that. Oh, not the gaggers. I will say the gaggers on Norwegian were amazing, and these were just good. And service overall, I'm just going to say, was 10 out of 10. Everybody was great. However, we didn't get a single towel swan. We did not get a towel swan or a towel frog. We got no towel animals the entire trip. I was shocked. I was too. Sad, not disappointed, because he still did a really good job. He was a really nice guy. I still give him a good tip. Oh my God, amazing. The entire the entire cast and crew on Royal Caribbean, they worked their asses off. You better bring cash. You better tip these people with cash, because they deserve it. Love you, Royal. Attention campers, please meet at the old flagpole under the tall pine for morning announcements. Attention campers, we just want to thank you all for being so good last week, Mm. okay? You know me and Counselor Jonathan were on vacation, and Sandwich reported back saying that you were fantastic to him. So thank you so much. But there was an incident in the mess hall that we were um, brought to light, uh, brought to our attention. Mm. We said no more jam in the mess hall because of what happened last year and i'm not going to get into it any further but whatever camper snuck in the smuckers you're on our shit list and we'll get back to you later you smuckers fuckers (laughs) i have a little bit of housekeeping this week we got a really funny email in from a, a camper and i am just obsessed it was from lydia so she emailed us and said Today, while I was cleaning my house, I was wishing that I would have saved the newest episode of the podcast for my manic deep clean. I decided to go back and listen to an old episode, hoping to hear parts that I may have missed. Not even three minutes into this episode, you say, and I quote, I I was like a scary clown. And if you know me, come on, guys, I'm not going to dress up as a clown voluntarily. That's just not my vibe. Pardon me, mister, recently turned 28 years old and did a clown photo shoot. I'm expecting an apology in the morning announcements in the near future. And if not, it's fine. We will, of course, forgive you. Love you both. Clowning around in the Shady Birch downtown. That was the Halloween episode when I was talking about growing up. And I said I would never dress up as a clown voluntarily because I had to because it was out of like a, a bin. And then for my birthday this year on Instagram, I did a clown photo shoot. She really caught my ass. She did. Lydia, you're dragging me. And you know what? I take it, rake me over the coals and give me a spanking. I deserve it. (laughs) You are correct. That was just a little thing I wanted to mention. That made me laugh. (laughs) Thanks, Lydia. (laughs) Thanks for going back and listening to older episodes. I love that. Um, Okay, so morning announcements. I'm going to keep it cruise related, guys. All cruise related. So this article comes from businessinsider.com and it's titled, A retired couple sold their home so they could permanently live on cruise ships for less than $43 a day. Oh, what's that equate to a month? Multiply that by how many? By Under 2,000. Higher or lower? Just kidding. Go. Ahead. <laughs> All right. So Angeline and Richard Burke, they're retired and they're like, hey, why don't I have this crazy idea? And Angeline is a former accountant. So she's got numbers buzzing all in her head. And she figured it out. Hello. She figured out that for close to $43 a day, it would cover like meals and drinks and everything that they need. It would cost less than than their home. And again, you know, they're retired and they just want to travel. So it kind of makes sense. So in 2021, they sold their home and they hopped on a ship and they haven't gotten off of it since. And it is now 2023 as we record this. 
So the couple visited Italy, they visited Iceland, Singapore, the Caribbean, and they've they actually just started their 51 day cruise from Seattle to Sydney. Oh, wow. They do cruises that long. No, I think they figured out how to hop along. And I think third, can you imagine? Like, that's like, that's a long time. I think they're just hopping along. So it's their own 51 day. A lot of planning for this, though, I would yeah. say. Well, hey, if you've got nothing but time to plan, go off, queen. So um, I thought this was really interesting because then this article linked to another article. There's a cruise line called Storylines, and they have a ship that is coming out that is for people who are going to choose to fully rent or own a home on board. So it's going to basically be an apartment building on the water. Oh, wow. I wonder what features it comes with. It, they looked really luxe. I will say that. It looks like a normal cruise ship, but the rooms were really luxe. A home on board will cost residents between $400,000 and $8 million. Oh, my God. It's launching in 2024, and the ship does offer two-story penthouses, a solar-powered hydroponic garden, and there is even an onboard school. Oh, my yeah, God. Like an accredited school that you can send your kids to, which... That is absolute insanity. Uh, so the company is selling leasehold agreements for 12 months, 24 months, or 60 years. 60 years? Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ, what a jump. Yeah. And um, it, again, is going to start in 2024, and they're going to journey to six continents. Um, I will say, I think that that makes sense because when we were getting off our ship, they had an announcement being like, okay, if you're getting back on, you have to deboard, deboard the ship regardless of how long you're doing your cruise for so some people were like getting off at nine and then getting back on at like 12 to like recheck in a lot of people do that a lot of older people do they love old people love cruises and they i love do. them too i was gonna say i can't blame them do you think those old people are the same people who have those upside down pineapples on their door you post that on instagram and people think we're swingers now but that wasn't our door guys that wasn't our door if you don't know an upside down pineapple is a sign for swingers well, I say love, love, love who you love and love a swinger if you and, love a swinger. And love thy neighbor. Love him good. Oh, he loves him good. <laughs> Get out of the water and onto the dock. You're not going to believe what I just heard. Welcome back to Gossip Dock. Mm -hmm. I love it's called Gossip Dock and this is a cruising episode and it has something to do with boats and docks. So yeah. that, it all ties in. We also have been getting a lot of emails saying Gossip Talk. And it does make sense that if you're listening to this and not watching it on YouTube, because we have the little visuals that say Gossip Doc. And I also do mumble often when I say it, but it's Gossip Doc. Oh, it's Gossip. Goss yeah, it, you're right. Yeah. It makes sense. It's Gossip Talk, Gossip Doc, but it's Gossip Doc with a D, not a T. <laughs> okay. Anyways, <laughs> this Gossip Doc was submitted by Kirsten, I believe it's pronounced, because we asked her people online to send us in some cruise drama, some cruise stories, and she sent something so simple, so sweet, so chaotic, and I'm obsessed. It was a DM on my Instagram. She starts off her DM by saying, I'm loving your cruise and the fake police officer stripper mustache kind of works. Thank you, Kirsten. So cruise drama is real. My family, me, husband, and two kids took a cruise over Christmas, New Year's in 2019 slash 2020. Keep that date in mind, people. It was epic drama. There was a murder. A wife served her husband divorce papers on the ship and he strangled her to death. That was number one. Number two. Two parents got wasted and left their kid in port in Belize. They had to be airlifted via helicopter port um, back to relief to retrieve their children. So they go to the helicopter back to get the kids and the cruise is gone. Number three, someone died of a heart attack. The whole ship went on lockdown with a crazy alert at 3 a.m. Wow. Number four, a knockdown fist fight at the pool and that that fist fight filled the entire brig. So they arrested that many people that the brig was filled on this cruise. I'm assuming the brig is the is the jail. The brig is the cruise jail, everybody. And they filled it with this cruise fight. And to round it all off, half of the group complained after the cruise that they got the worst flu ever. Likely the beginning of the international spreading of COVID. Uh, and they did not know. They did not know. It was the end of 2019, 2020. We didn't know. There was like six weeks later, we're like, oh, there's COVID. But that's all the symptoms matched up to COVID before we knew what COVID was. And also people were really just like 
nasty on cruises beforehand. Oh, yeah. The one that we were on had sinks at every buffet. Washy, washy everywhere you go. Everybody's picking up the spoons with their mouths beforehand. That's real drama. To recap, everybody, this cruise had a murder. Missing children left in international waters. Someone died of a heart attack. An entire fight breaking out that filled the entire cruise jail. And the start of COVID. That was a drama-filled <laughs> ship. And thank you for submitting that, Kirsten. We loved it. I wonder how many days that was. Probably seven. A lot can even happen in one day. Hmm. Grab your bug juice and bear spray campers. It's time to pack it up and take a hike. Welcome back to Take a Hike. This is the part of the show where we talk about things that are grinding our gears, pissing us off, and we just want to bitch a little, as if we haven't done that enough already. So I'll kick it off like it's the Super Bowl. Go birds. Um, what's been pissing me off lately on this cruise was people who are just Debbie Downers on a cruise. Zach and I went to the Lime and the Coconut. Yes. Oh, no, it wasn't called that. Was it? Something like that. Lime and Coconut sounds more fun. Say that. The Lime and the Coconut. And we're sitting there. And while we're waiting for our drinks to be made, there's a man sitting by himself. It's about 11 a.m. Oh. And he's reading a book and he keeps looking up from his book, looking at us like I can see that he's attempting to wedge himself and 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 start a conversation, which is normal on a cruise. People talk to everybody in the cruise. I'm always down to talk to thy neighbor. Yeah. But what was wrong with this man? He just was a Debbie Downer. Well, first off, he started off by trying to impress us with how much he's drank. Let it be known that this man is probably late for 40s, early 50s, early 50s for sure. He's way older than 40s. And he was talking about how he was listing a bunch of drinks and he was like, and that was for breakfast. And I'm like, that sounds like an issue, which if it's an issue, that's okay. But get help and not brag about it. But it wasn't like a fun thing. I had three dark and stormies and this, 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 this. It was like very like, like it was trying to impress us. And we're like, oh, very cool. And when we weren't impressed by that, he was like, yeah, and this is my second book of the day. I was like, you're telling me you drank all that and you could read no, exactly, exactly. And he wasn't really reading. He was just holding it as a prop. And the book looks stupid. He wanted to talk about it. Oh, he want, yeah, he was like, oh, it's called like the, the Murder in the Kitchen. I'm so he's like, it's a, it's a real crazy book. I'm like, oh. sure it is. I'm sure it is. And I don't care. And then he started, he asked us what we do. And we told him what we do, not in depth. But we were like, yeah, we, we make content online. And he goes, oh, so you work for China. And I was like, oh, my God. Okay. And he was like, oh, well, all those apps are China. And I was like, well, uh, well, they've been really good to me. What do you do? And he's like, I run a business. And I can work from wherever I am. And that's why I'm here. I'm currently working right now with a drink in my hand at the bar. And I'm like, nothing you're saying is coming out with anything lovely or nice or even a, like a talkative energy. It seems like everything we said to him, he just shit on. Like yeah. We couldn't say anything for him to be like, <laughs> oh, like I got a drink. And he was like, oh, that's all you're drinking. Can water, can water. You yeah. have a, a big a Michelob Ultra. You know, I love Michelob Ultra. You do, I'm going to defend that till the day I die. And you're making fun of my drink, making fun of what I eat, making fun of the way that what we're doing, making fun of what we do for work. And I was like, bro, we got to go. B bye. Bye. And, and then he wanted to show us a Facebook singer randomly. He was like, here's this guy who sings on Facebook. He's really good, but he'll never go on tour. He was saying how talented this guy was because he did like that, like, when people say, how do you how do you know how do you do that? He like harmonizes with himself. He'll he'll do a bunch of like six to nine videos of this man singing by himself over a song. Everything done vocally, like uh, pitch perfect style. Very great. And the guy's like, "What a shame! He'll never go on tour. He'll never make a dime." I'm like, he. I'm looking at his page right now, and he he's got a check mark. He's doing things. You just can't comprehend it. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. Like, even the thing that he enjoys, he still finds a way to be negative about it. Like, you love this guy so much, and the next thing you say about him is, he'll never tour, though. It's like, I think technology works pretty well, okay? I think he probably could figure out how to do it. He sucked. And we saw him again, and we avoided him like the play. I'm like, don't talk to me ever again, sir. Literally went up the next day, and I tried to, like, turn my back to him. He was reading the same book. He was on the same page. He was telling the same story to a new new group of people on the other side of him. I was like, I heard this story, like, yesterday. I didn't tell you. I was like, please give me my drink so I can get out of here. But it's funny because, like, of all places in the world, the most talkative place in the entire, like, place ever if you want to go mingle and talk to people a cruise is where you do it everybody is talking to everybody everyone's super nice but i'm like you're not going to make friends you're not going to meet somebody that is going to want to hang out with you if you're miserable man like oh yeah. i hated him i also grouped him into the people that were miserable on the bus tour that told me that i was late yeah 
I would agree. And the, that's my that's my take. Hike. Yeah, those people were miserable. Everyone else, fantastic. Mm. We make great people. So uh, what are you telling to take a hike? Oh, it's nobody's fault. It's just the way the world is. Motion sickness on a cruise is real, you guys. Mm. People will tell you don't feel it. You do. Actually, the first cruise I went on a couple of years ago, Norwegian, I didn't feel it. This one I did. We were going so fast the first two days to get to St. Kitts. And the ocean was a little rocky. And we could really feel it. I really wish we would have brought Dramamine or mm. patches. I was kind of like, we don't need them. I didn't, I didn't need them last time. We definitely did, you guys. Um, and when people are like, oh, just get drunk and you'll even out. No, because we were drunk and it was rocky and it just felt even worse. So I was like uh, really sick the first day. It was bad. Also, I'm not sure if this is a lie or not, but I looked it up and people say that day one, they give, they put like laxatives in the food and like a higher fat content and more like butter and oil and stuff for the plumbing situation. Just so people are just like having soft stoolies. Just on day one or the whole time. I don't know if it's day one or the whole time, but you and I were both like an unnatural amount of sick the first day. Oh, I was dropping, I was dropping them in there and it was, I felt sick to my stomach. Yeah. It honestly was worth it though. It, I really can't overcame. I don't want to like deter people from going on cruises. Think you're gonna be sick the entire time. You're really not going to be, but if you do get motion sickness, like you need to prepare for it because I am not going to lie to you guys. It was rough. There was nowhere to go. Where do you go? What do you mean? Like how to escape the motion sickness. It's oh. just like, you just have to lay and and pray we also had so much booze in our stomach that like it was really sloshing a lot which i don't think helped the cause at all yeah um but the, it's nobody's fault i'm not blaming anybody for that that's the that's mother nature that's the ocean mm. hey, that's the way of the world it's the motion of the um, ocean but if the worst thing we're complaining about guys is a rock and boat on day one and a man we met for 20 minutes at a bar it really ain't that deep it was a great it was a great cruise mm -hmm. do you think the new counselor likes the top bunk or the bottom bunk over Either way, I'm giving them my boondoggle keychain. Over. Crushes on the open sea. I'm kissing girls and I'm hugging boys and I'm living in the sun on the Caribbean air. Welcome back to Crush of the Week. I don't know what that was. I never know what I'm going to say when I start this segment. This is the part of the show where we tell you who we crush it on. Cruise edition. All right. So who am I crushing on? I've got two crushes for you guys. Oh. And we start, if you were following us on social media, you already know who it is. Everyone makes cruise friends, right? But you just... It happens in the most unlikely of times, in the most unlikely of areas. That's a total lie. This was a completely likely area for this to happen. I'm sitting there reading my book as I do, daiquiri in hand, and I'm getting to the bottom of my strawberry daiquiri. And I don't notice because I have headphones in, listening to smooth jazz, instrumental only to help me focus with my reading. And I hear someone say, what are you slurping on? <laughs> And I, I looked up and I had to take my, my thing out. And this woman repeated again. She said, what are you slurping on? I was like embarrassed because I like, I'm slurping loud and I didn't realize it because my headphones were in. I told her it was a strawberry daiquiri. So she orders one. And that was when we met Wanda, our cruise mom. We became friends with this woman, Wanda, and her daughter, Latasha, so quickly. We'd like we hit it off instantly and we just started chatting for like hours in the quiet area of the solarium mind you and we just we just hit it off it was like effortless it was like wanda and latasha they're just the most beautiful women ever they're so funny i also want to note that i made a joke on tiktok radio this week on the valentine's day episode that you chew out and i got dragged a lot they're like don't say it to him he looks so upset and you weren't upset no no but people really read the comments they're like they're oh, like he's gonna that. cry right now i'm like no. he was not but how did Wanda figure out who you were from <laughs> but, your loud ass slurping? You do. But Wanda is so sweet and Latasha is so sweet. And we were, sat with them for like two hours just talking about mm -hmm. our lives and who we were. And it was really funny. So we're like maybe an hour and a half in. I've already gotten them food at this point, got them hot dogs and hamburgers. And we're chilling. And this girl comes up to us and she's like, I just want to say like, I love you so much. You're such a talented like comedian and like you mean so much to me. And they're like, who the hell? They didn't know who we were, which was kind of like fun because I got to meet a lot of people on the cruise that had seen my videos or, or knew who we were. But Wanda and Latasha had no idea. And when they found out that we did videos and that we made videos with them, it was like a like other layer of just fun because it was such a pure interaction. It was just like truly like, oh, who are you? Let's talk. And they had the most interesting stories. Yeah. They oh, my amazing. God. They could write a book. They both could. Seriously. Um, but yeah, we ended up kicking it with them for like the rest of the time we would meet up 
almost every day at some point to get drinks or something. At one time we went out with uh, Latasha. It was the day of Coco, no, of St. Thomas because Wanda was back at the room. We went to dinner with Latasha. We went out to go to the show and literally they switched places, I swear. They hadn't had this plan, but one got on the elevator, the other one came off. And then we went to a bar with Wanda and then they both came to the show. It was so funny. And it was great because we had that perfect interaction the first day with them. Second day and St. Kitts, we didn't see them all day. And we're like, oh, I hope we run into them again. We're not gonna see them, where, where are they? And then we're getting on the beach on St. Thomas on Megan's Bay. And I'm sitting there, put my towel down. And I hear this woman like telling a guard, like a, telling a, a, a person that works there. She's like, I want this chair. This is the chair that I want. <laughs> and I look up, it's Wanda. And I was like, oh <laughs> my God, mama. <laughs> and then we ran into them again. So like, even if we hadn't met them and talked to them, we just like kept crossing each other's paths constantly they without even planning it. Salt of the earth, yeah. the best kind of people, funny, amazing, so generous. She bought us those keychains just because she was thinking about her yeah. boys. We like ran into her at the souvenir shop and she was buying a daiquiri, a strawberry daiquiri keychain for me. And then a little bottle opener with a turtle on it for you. I didn't see the turtle on the shore and she was sad I didn't see it because you saw it. Yeah. And she met you through the strawberry daiquiri. Like so thoughtful. Yeah. yeah. So we saw her that night. We saw them again. We saw them at the karaoke bar. We went out with them. We were in the club with them till 2 a.m. We did the family portrait package with them. <laughs> we did the family portrait package with a Wanda. I wish Tasha was there, but she wasn't there for that. But but we keep up with them now. We're cruise friends for life. Hopefully they'll come to Camp Shady Birds. They would love it here. I know. We told them, I was like, if you ever come to New York Girls, you have a place to stay. They were just so good. And it was just, it was easy with them. Yeah. It was, it, we got to go know each other and we got to share really funny, like personal stories from our lives. And they just really remember everything. And mm -hmm. they're just sweet. And we met them like the perfect way. Yeah. And I'm happy that we met them like what, day two, day three? Yeah. Day two. Like that. Day two we met them. Oh yeah, it was yeah, it was day two. So we had them a whole whole night and the last night we wanted to go out so bad to get drinks with them, but we were so dead and we messaged we messaged Latasha. We were like, hey girl, I don't think we can make it out. We're so dead. We're already laying in bed. And she goes, Don't worry, me too. So she was <laughs> safe. She, she was like, I'm already in bed. <laughs> she was cruised out. That happens though. You get to that point where you're like too much sun, too much alcohol, too much fun. But this episode is dedicated to Wanda and Latasha mm -hmm. for like being genuinely the highlight of our entire trip was meeting them. Yeah. They were so great. They were really fun. So who are you crushing on? I wanted to say the same thing, but for the for the show, I will yeah. say a separate one, but they are my true crush of the week. But also it kind of vibes with them. I love that karaoke bar, guys. A karaoke bar is fun anywhere in the world. A karaoke bar and a cruise is probably the most fun you can have because these people are from everywhere and they are down to be spotted. They are down to be seen. You're going to see amazing performers. You're going to see some weird performances and you just never know what you're going to get. Mm -hmm. They fill 50 spots in 10 minutes, okay? And let me tell you, it's probably the same people every single night. Yeah. So I have a couple honorable mentions. Okay, please. Some do. of my favorites, okay? Yeah. Coming in at number one. Sam. It's got to be Sam. It's got to be Sam. Sam was this small, very, um, I don't know, quiet Asian man that game, went up there. And he's saying, I did it my way by Frank Sinatra. Boy, did he did it his way. This little tiny karaoke bar erupted in the most monumental applause because you just didn't see it coming with that guy. He was amazing on fire. But then I came back a second night and he got the wrong version of his song. Mm -hmm. He wanted to do Elvis. I uh, can't help falling in love. And it was a little sped up or something like that. And he was upset. And I was like, Sam, I know this is your moment, but also like we were at a cruise karaoke bar. It is not that serious. But he was a little tense. Someone DM me that they said they've seen that same exact man on a different cruise. He's a performer. He's a performer and he loves it. Um, <clears throat> coming at number two, it's going to be Josh. Has to be Josh. Josh is one of those people where it's like, okay, Karaoke seems a little too beginner for you. You were a little too good to be in the room right now. You're kind of showing some people up. Josh had uh, a voice like butter, if you will. Mm -hmm. it, he would sing He would sing John Legend and he would. He, and there wouldn't be a dry eye in the audience. Josh was fantastic. Josh and Sam were in the same category of people that would be there every single night, though. Like, but on, on the fifth night that we saw Josh, I'm like, okay, cut the shy, cut the shy bit. Okay, Josh, you know what you're doing. <laughs> he goes, they're like, oh, me? Like, I don't know if I can do it. It's like, Josh, we know you have pipes. It's the same crowd every night. And he was good. He was so good. So good. But number three. Who's number three? You baby? know who number three is. This is a little woman who, who gave me what I like to see best on karaoke. Her name is Celeste. 
What did she sing? It was Whitney Houston, something I did not recognize, but it was Whitney Houston. I don't remember what it was. By 30 seconds in, this woman was had her head all the way to the ground, would throw it up, might to the left, might to the right. She'd be pointing. She'd be, she used the stage. Her voice was a karaoke voice. Yeah. I don't know if it was, it was not American Idol already, not like Sam, but it was funny. It was entertaining. And she put on a show. I will say, if she didn't have the full voice, she had the karaoke voice, but the stage presence was incredible. Unmatched. She used the wheelchair ramp. Never have I seen someone use a wheelchair ramp in a karaoke performance. Is that what Natasha was like? Not her using the handicap ramp. And she worked <laughs> it. It was her runway. Oh, it was so funny. Went to the karaoke night, I think four or five nights of the night. It was at 10 30, 10 45 every night. It was just a fun place to end up because <clears throat> the vibes were high in there. And everybody in that audience was very supportive of everybody. Yeah. Like everybody like would freak out and scream and clap for everybody, which was fun. Like Yeah. We, however, did not karaoke. I it wasn't because we like didn't I guess we just didn't really have the drive to get up there. We were tired. Lord knows what would have happened if we went up there. I'm still struggling finding my perfect karaoke song. In the back of my head, it's always been He Wasn't Man Enough by Tony Braxton. But not everybody knows that song. A lot of people do, but not everybody. I think you would have been surprised. That was an older audience, first of all. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, Tony Braxton is a champion with her vocals. And I think you would have been surprised. But also, like... It was a little intimidating. It was yeah. the same. Like, okay, like Sam and Josh, they were up there every single night along with a bunch of other people. Like people would come just to sing and then they leave, which I'm like, okay, like don't sing and then not pro support other people. Yeah. Sam would walk in and he would leave the minute he was done. Mm -hmm. He wanted that applause. Sam was addicted to the applause. I think we all are to an extent. Yeah. Well, and I think that's why we didn't do it because I feel like we were we were performing enough online that we didn't need to get up there and take the spotlight from anybody else, okay? We were loving it. Uh, people were loving it. I loved it. The, that karaoke bar was probably another highlight of my cruise and it was even more fun going with Wanda and Latasha. They yeah, loved it too. They did. What song's been stuck in your head all week? <laughs> Welcome to Camp Songs. Welcome back to Camp Songs. This is the part of the show where we talk about the songs that have been stuck in our head. And this one, boy, oh boy, this one has been stuck in our heads. We've been singing it all week since we heard it, which was in St. Kitts. Yeah, we were going up to ziplining and we heard it and we couldn't stop. So the song is called Mind My Business by Patrice Roberts. And I had never heard of it, but let me sing a little ditty for you. Maybe we can both do it. This can be our karaoke moment. All right, one, two, three. Three. Drink water and mind my business. I'm gonna drink water and mind my business. I read the whole thing. It's so, so good. It's, hey, that one's candy for the brain for it's, sure. It's island, it's steel drum, it's vibes galore. And I love the message behind it. Drink water and mind my business. I think we all need to do more of that. I know I personally do. I don't drink water and I'm on everybody's business. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's so true. But it's a great island vibe. It does. It played on the beach. It played on the shore. It played It played everywhere. Yeah. Even and now the live performer sang it. Mm -hmm. And now it is, it is blasting through the speakers through Camp Shady Birch. So I'm going to put it on our Camp Songs playlist, which is you can listen to it for free on Spotify as well as YouTube. And if you guys just listening, if you're listening to this like sometime in the distant future and this song comes on, I want you to stop what you're doing. I want you to to pop that pussy and just drink water and mind your business. It is such a great song. I know. And, I, and I'm expecting people to listen to it this summer, wherever you are when it's warm. You don't have to be on the island vibes, but it's like such a fun, fun song. It, it gets me hopping. It gets me jumping. And it's very simple to learn. You can listen to it once and you're already like, you're already going light wrong with it. You know it, girls. So remind, remind, reminder, drink water and mind your business. Yeah, I don't have a camp song because that was the one I loved the most too. So we're sharing that camp song. Sorry. Scary stories around the campfire. Oh no. Who's at the door? It's the IRS. Welcome to Scary <laughs> Stories Around the Campfire. This is the part of the show where we read little stories written by our campers that make us scared or embarrassed. And this week, oh my God, it is cruise related. And oh my God, is it terrifying? They're, they're, this is the best submission for this episode. This is actually scary. I can't even believe it. Jonathan, you got to take this one away, babe. And usually I'll like keep, I might like tell you a little bit that's in a story before we record, but this one I just had to forward to you because I was, I kept gasping while I was reading this and I was fact checking and the story checks out. You guys, this is a scary story around the campfire. <clears throat> Let me paint the picture. It was January of 2007 and I was feeling fierce, determined that this was going to be my year. 
I was a junior in high school and finally gotten past the awkward high school phase. I made friends and I was thriving. One of the clubs I joined my sophomore year in hopes of re revamping my social life was doing their annual EF tour trip. Oh, okay. So EF, I was just going to ask you what that is. EF is a company that offers trips and tours for large groups. Got it. Doesn't know. I don't know what it stands for, but we're just going to yeah, wing it. It's very high school. They always do the EF tours, the ones that like take like high school like kids on like international trips. I've definitely heard of it. They're still in business. That year, the trip was to Greece and we were here for it. After begging my parents, my brother and I convinced them to let us go. Spring rolled around, we packed our bags and embarked on the journey. We arrived in Greece and spent four days exploring Athens first. On the fifth day, we were scheduled to set sail on a cruise of the Greek islands. I was particularly excited for this part of the trip because it was my first cruise experience, and although it wasn't a big American cruise line, we were about to visit some iconic places, including Santorini. Ooh. I was living my best sisterhood of the traveling pants fantasy. <laughs> so we set sail on our adventure at sea. We had the best time while at sea and docking at all the islands. We drank, we ate, and we partied our little asses off. On the last day of the cruise, we were set to visit Santorini. My friends and I were so excited, we met in my cabin to pregame with a fresh bottle of Smirnoff that we were able to get our hands on because drinking age is probably 18. We felt on top of the world, dancing and taking shots as we killed time before we were, su we were supposed to dock in Santorini. <laughs> All of a sudden, we hear a loud thump and a scraping sound. Uh, we thought it seemed odd, but we brushed it off thinking we had probably just docked. Again, she hadn't been on a cruise before. So. She's 17. So we were feeling nice and tipsy when the, loud bang, when the loud banging interrupted the partying. We quickly hid the vodka under the bed and I rushed to open the door. On the other side was the trip chaperone in a panic and she screamed, get your life jackets and come up to the deck now. She continued running down the hall, knocking on all the doors of the other people who were part of our trip. In that moment, I didn't know what was happening, but I went into survival mode and grabbed my life jacket and ran. Oh no. The place was total chaos. We were finally able to make it to the top deck when we found our group. I took a look, I took a look around and I noticed my brother was missing. My stomach sank and I went into a panic. I ran around the deck looking for him frantically and nothing. After an hour of waiting, I hear my name being called. I turn around and I see my brother. Relief came over me and we ran towards each other and hugged for what felt like an eternity. While I hugged him, I noticed his pants were soaked and I asked him what happened. He told me it was because his cabin was at the lowest level and the hall had quickly filled with water. Him and his roommate had to swim to get to the stairs. Like Titanic. I couldn't believe it and I was so relieved that he was okay. After several hours of waiting with no updates from the staff, we finally heard that we were being evacuated onto smaller fishing boats. As I climbed down a ladder on the side of the boat barefoot, as I had left my room like that, it finally sunk in, pun intended, that I had totally lost all of my belongings. We finally made it to land and I finally started to feel safe. I had to buy a pair of flip-flops at the local souvenir shop next to the docks as the waiting game continued. The cruise company had said the cruise company had sent other cruises to transport us back to Athens since it was the only way we could get home from the island. You truly cannot make this up. Two days later, we finally made it home and we were reunited with our families at the airport. It definitely was an unforgettable trip and a story I'll always remember. Sincerely, Lost at Sea in Cabin 34. Guys, <laughs> I'm surprised she didn't just come out and spell it out for us. So she was on the Sea Diamond or the Diamond Sea, and it was a cruise ship that had hit an underwater caldera. So there were like all these rock formations, which in the news articles I had looked up from 2007 were saying like it was very well known to anybody who was in a boat or could read in that area that of course, it was of course. noted everywhere that there was a caldera that made it seem shallower and there was rocks. It was a dangerous situation, okay? The rocks damaged the ship. There's photos of it. It is so... It's my worst nightmare. On, anyone's worst nightmare on a cruise ship. And the captain was charged with negligence. But luckily, our camper got out unharmed along with her brother. I cannot believe it. She little Her parents are probably like, it's fine. They're going to cruise in the Caribbean with a, a high school group. 
the damage to the bottom of the ship caused the bottom floor to flood. So her little brother is waiting, swimming through a hallway, Titanic style, to the top of this probably very tiny cruise ship because it's the Mediterranean ones. Yeah. Because he hit a caldera that was clearly marked. If you're a cruise driver in this area, I'm sure you know. You can't just become a cruise ship driver, pilot. Captain. Captain. Thank you. And not be good at this. Was he drunk? I, it didn't say. However, I do know because it's like that sometimes. Well, it used to be a lot more common for um, airplane pilots to be drunk because a lot of it's like. Yeah, it's like fake. Yeah, it's autopilot. But um, it did not say anything about him being drunk that I saw. However, I didn't do a deep dive of research, so that could have been the case. But yeah, that's crazy. The cruise went down. That was the horror story that I was looking for. But it's upsetting. Two people did go missing. It, I think it was a Frenchman and his they, daughter. They died for sure. Probably. I don't think they were ever found. That's it was, it was crazy because we read this story and John was like, I have to look this up. And immediately there was like a hundred news articles about it. So it's very real. She was on this cruise in 2007. Um, I think she's about like four years old than me, maybe three for you. Like mm-hmm. so she's like pr- she's like our age. I just I can't even believe it. And she has good spirits about it. And I'm glad every they were okay. Um, a tragedy for sure, but that is a, a, a nightmare. Titanic in 2007. I can't believe it. Sorry to end on that note, but um, but we loved our cruise, which didn't sink. We did. We had so much fun on the cruise. We know this is a longer episode than usual, but we, there was just so much we couldn't cut out, and we wanted to give you all the nitty gritty. But we are like kind of cutting out one part. An entire day. At Universal Studios. We went to Universal first, and we had never been before, and we had so much fun. It was a blast. So many stories from there, but I think we're going to hold off on that. Yeah, we're going to hold off on it, Um, and if you guys want to hear it, we are starting Patreon, where you can pay for some bonus content. So head on over to patreon.com slash camp counselors to hear a little bit about that. Yeah, so it's um, patreon.com um, slash camp counselors. Mm-hmm. And we're going to have um, a bonus episode, probably like, a, like a, a smaller episode, talking just about Universal Studios. You also have a couple vlogs going on there from Yeah, our, you our- guys, from a while ago, from episode one and two, when we went to Disney, we vlogged that in anticipation of eventually doing a Patreon and the VMAs when we went to the VMAs in episode two, we talked about it a little, but if you want to get the full visuals, we got those videos are going to be posted up over there too. And we're going to continue to like vlog our crazy fun expeditions. We did vlog a little bit on the cruise. So you'll see some videos over there too of that cruise of this cruise. Hello. What am I saying? Yeah. So we'll have a bunch of stuff on there that is brand new, but also um, we want to make sure that this is of value to you. It's not going to be expensive at all. It's just a way for us to monetize us because we don't have any ads on here, but we have a lot of fun and there's a lot of stuff that we can't cover on here that we want somewhere to put it. So if you want to support us, patreon.com slash camp counselors. And please, if you have any ideas of things that you'd love to see on Patreon, please feel free to email us at camcounselorpod at gmail.com. Mm-hmm. And we'd love to make sure that we're making this worth your while because we're really excited about this. So yeah, for sure. check it out for our deep dive or our shallow dive or whatever we're talking about, about Universal Studios. <laughs> well, yeah, that, but that does wrap up this episode. So with that being said, lights, lights out, out campers. campers.